So Apple Classroom. Apple Classroom is Bluetooth based, which means that the students need to be within range of you. And you'll see there, you know, when you first open up your Apple Classroom, if the students are in your room, they'll be grayed out. And then when they come in, you'll see them all light up. One thing that's great about Apple Classroom is that you can view the student's screens to see exactly what it is that they're working on for good or for bad. Uh, it allows you to force open and lock the students into apps. So if you only want them into one thing, you can lock them there and they can't get out. They can, you can also lock all the iPads at once or one in particular uh, student. You can also display their screens up on your LG board. And last but not least, at the end of class, you can get an app report to find out exactly what it is that each and every one of your students were doing. Feel free to screenshot that and use that at a, at a conference if you want to. So hey, let's take a look at Apple Classroom and we'll see how it looks. So here we're having a look at my iPad, and the Apple Classroom is an app that has an orange teacher against a whiteboard. Uh, it's an orange square. So go ahead and click your Apple Classroom open, and then this is what you're going to see. Now, because I'm a uh, I don't have any students, I've only got one test class here with one fake student in there. So yours will look different, especially if you're a specialist or unified arts teacher, you'll have lots of classes. If you are a regular classroom teacher, you'll just have your regular classes. Um, you can move your classes around to put them in the order in which you'd like them. So if you're one of those special ed teachers or reading teachers or uh, unified arts teachers that has all kinds of classes, put them in the order that you like best. They are rostered by power school names and numbers, so they're kind of hard to decipher, but once you open it up, you'll see which kids are in which classes. Uh, let's take a real quick tour. On the left, we see classes and agendas. We're not going to worry about agendas right now. Um, and I'm going to tap classes. And as you'll, you'll see, this is what I've got. I've just got that one test class. If I go ahead and tap test and open it up, you'll see that I've got one student here. And you'll notice right away that you can see that student's device. So if I reverse pinch, so I'm going to take my fingers and spread them out, I can see exactly what that student is on right now. So I'm going to move that student's iPad over to show you that you can see in live time what exactly that student is working on. So if you'd like to supervise one kid, that's how you do it. All of your students that are in your room will show up. I should mention that Apple Classroom is Bluetooth, so it will only show the students that are directly in your room within 30 feet or so. Once they move out of that range, you'll see them grayed out. Let's take a tour across the top, shall we? We're looking at all of our students right now, and as you can see, all of my students is a list of one that will look different for yours, of course. If you tap this pile of books, that shows you all the apps that that student has that I can lock them into. So I can send them to any of those. So for example, if I wanna send them to the camera, you'll notice now that my iPad immediately shows the camera app, which <laughs> I'm showing a picture of the uh, cover, so it's not that exciting, but I can force a student into that app. So if you want all of your kids to go to one app, that's how you do it, so right here. The other thing that's important about this is right here, a lock in after opening. If you tap lock in after opening and then force a kid into an app, so let's say we're gonna force them into the Safari app, I'm gonna force that student into Safari and that kid can't go anywhere but Safari. So as you can see now, I've got all my students forced in there, all one of them, and as you can see, I now have my student forced into Safari. He cannot go anywhere but the app that I forced them into, which is pretty cool. It eliminates some distractions. Moving across the top, if you wanna see all of your students if you click this button right here, all of your students show up. It will be much more exciting for you than it is for me because I just have this one student. Um, if you only see heads and you don't see their screens, you can tap it again so that you can see what's actually on student screens. The next one, the eyeball is not very exciting. You can hide an app from a kid, but I'm going to show you a better way to do that on Jamf. So we'll move off of that right now. Next, this is the one that everybody really likes to lock the students. So as you see right now, my student is on their home screen. If I want to, I can tap this lock and that lock will lock all of the students in my room so that they now can't go anywhere. So uh, they have a lock screen on their device and it says this iPad has been locked by Jeff Kresge. 
What immediately happens when you do that in your classroom is all the students stop, they look up at you, and you've got their attention to make an adjustment in the class. The mute button does exactly what you think it would be. So if the kids are all playing YouTube videos and it's really loud in your room, you can tap the mute button. They can override that, but it does get that silence for just a second. The three buttons, the three dots, the ellipsis will end the class. I'll show you that in just a second. If you want to work on one particular student, if you go to just their, their icon and just tap on it, these are individual student things. So I can do all of those things that I can for one kid. If I just want to view that one student screen, I can tap view screen. I can also lock that one particular student. So if you have a kid in the back of the room that's being kind of a goon and you want to lock them down for just a second, you can do that from anywhere in your classroom. Last thing, when you leave your class, when you click the ellipsis and you end your class, so you tap end class, very simple. It will give you right here a list of everything that all the things have been used. So for example, earlier in this video, we talked about the camera, we talked about the Safari app. Those are the two apps that we used. But if you tap on an individual student, so I tap this kid, it shows me not only where they've been, but how long they were on it and when. So if you have a kid that's jumping all over the internet, you can then take a screenshot of this. It doesn't save, but you can take a screenshot and you can save that for a conference. So if this parent says, boy, my student really has low scores in your class, why is that? You could say, well, because when we're doing iPad lessons, the kid is not, never really focused. Here's evidence of that. Again, that is Apple Classroom. It works on Bluetooth, so they have to be in your classroom. Bad news is the kids can click off uh, of your control by resetting their machine. That takes about two minutes, but it takes you about two seconds for you to realize, oh, they're back up, and then you can click them back in again. If you want more control and more power, you can use the Jamf tool, and I would use both in tandem. Apple Classroom is really good for seeing the kids' screens and locking them. Jamf is really good for everything else. But as you'll see in the Jamf video, with great power comes great responsibility. So that's Apple Classroom. If you have any questions, please reach out to Jason and I. We'll be glad to help. Thanks.